going to be an area integral dA, area integral y tilde dA. So it's the exact same equations you had before. At the bottom here, that's going to be the actual area. So <coughs> your area is an integral over dA. Now we look at the dA itself. <coughs> if I look at the dA, then we come back to this rectangle, the one I've just drawn. And <coughs> from that diagram, the height will be y2 minus y1. Take the two distances, we subtract it. You multiply it by dx. So <coughs> this equation becomes y2 minus y1 times dx. <coughs> then we need the x tilde. In the x coordinate of the centroid of this rectangle. So if I use this as C, that's going to be x tilde and y tilde. Or the x tilde and y tilde are the centroid of this rectangle. So <coughs> looking at the diagram, the x coordinate is going to be x plus half of the width as dx over 2. So since we're taking dx as approaching 0, we could drop this, I could take this as x. <coughs> then we need the y coordinate. Now y coordinate will be this height plus this height. <coughs> so <coughs> again from the same diagram, you're looking at y1 plus the distance is y2 minus y1, we multiply this by half. And that should give you the y coordinate. And that actually comes out to be, in here, it should be one half and y2 plus y1. <coughs> so that's the necessary equations. Then we look at these y2 and y1 by itself. <coughs> if I look at this point, we said the coordinate was x plus dx over 2 and y1. Now this one is approaching 0 with the limit. Same thing here. This is going to approach 0. So <coughs> I can use these coordinates and use this equation. Or I could say that y1 is equal to x squared over a because this point is on the bottom curve. So the coordinate which is on that curve should satisfy this equation. So you get one of these here, then the next one, this point, that's on the second curve, or <coughs> you could say that the y2 is going to be equal to the square root a times x. So <coughs> that's the second equation. Now this helps because the moment if I come here, I could make a substitution for y2. That's square root a x minus y1, which is x is square over a this times dx. <coughs> now we need the limits. To find the limits, you're going to go from here, I said that's 0, and we go all the way up to here, that's a. So <coughs> for this integration, we have to go from 0 
up to A. So that's the <coughs> final form of the integration for finding the area. <coughs> so the rest of it is just basically integrations. The first one is going to give you square root A, then you have 2 thirds x 3 over 2, then you're going to have x cubed over 3a and it's between limits 0 and a. <coughs> so we make substitution here, that's x 3 over 2, then you have another half, and then you have 2 thirds and then 1 third, so basically you get 1 third a squared. And that should be what we call as the area. The next integration. Next integration will be x tilde dA. <coughs> x tilde is known, that's x. Then we have the area which is y2 minus y1 dx. And that's going to be x and then <coughs> you need to <coughs> make substitution for y2, that's the square root a x minus x square over a dx. <coughs> and again, your limit is going to go from 0 and so it's really the same equation. All you're doing is you're making substitutions to make sure that when you do an integration, everything in here is <coughs> when you integrate, you're integrating on dx. Or well, this is what determines your variable for integration. So <coughs> all the y's which were here or they show up here, they all have to be changed in terms of x because you're integrand, the whole thing in here has to be a function of x. I mean, that's why even if you start with all these numbers, but at the end, <coughs> everything has been changed in x. Now, once you get there, I mean, the rest of it is pretty much straightforward. <coughs> You're integrating from 0 to a, <coughs> square root a, then you have x 3 over 2 minus x cubed over a times dx. So <coughs> this as an integration will be square root a remains there. 3 over 2 changes. It's going to become 2 fifth x 5 over 2 minus that's a cube. So that's going to go to the fourth. So you get x fourth <coughs> for a. And we're going to head from 0 to a. So, that's a, a 5 over 2 and a half. That's a cube. Same thing here, you have a fourth over a. So, a cube comes out. Then you have 2 fifths minus 1 fourth. So, that's 20. <coughs> that's 8. That's 5. Or this whole thing should be. 3a cube over 1. <coughs> we need one more integration. This time we need y tilde dA. Now y tilde is known too as 1 half y2 minus y1. <coughs> dA is also known as y this plus you have y2 minus y1 dx. So <coughs> this is going to be 1 half. You have still have integration. We're going to multiply these two. That gives you y2 square, y1 square times dx. Or <coughs> this is half y2 square. We know the 
y2 which is here, the square of that is going to be ax minus y1 square. That will be x4 over a square. This whole thing times dx. And <coughs> for this, the limit is the same. It's going to go from 0 all the way up to a. So you get 1 half. You're going from 0 to a. Then we have ax minus x fourth over a fourth and dx. You do the integration on this. <coughs> that should be a x squared over 2 minus x fifth over a fourth and there's going to be a 5 within limits 0 to a. <coughs> So <coughs> now you got one half. There is a squ <coughs> square here and an a. I could take a cube outside this. You get one half and one fifth. So that's ten. That's five. That's two. So it should be again three a cube over twenty. It's the same integration as this one here. So, <coughs> now we are in a position to find x bar. x bar would be the area which is um, here. That's a square over 3. Then you have 3a cube over 20. Or <coughs> that gives you 9 over 20a. That's x bar, and you get y bar, it's really the same value as so a square over 3, 3a three cube over 20. So that's another 9 20th and a. So that's basically what the <coughs> x and y coordinates in that particular area. Any questions on this?